Morning, Sergeant. I'm Joanna Lumley. I'm going on the survival course. Not dressed like that, you know. Sam Hill! Escort Miss Lumley to the quartermaster's stores! One bag holder. One pair of gloves. One jersey. One shirt. One smock combat. One trousers combat. One pair of boots. Two pairs of socks. One head over. One pair of panties. Please sign. asked me if I'd like to live on a desert island like Robinson Crusoe, I leapt at the chance. It had always been a childhood dream. But before I could be packed off to paradise, I was sent to Purbright for one day's survival training with the 1st Battalion of the Irish Guards. Plants, shrubs, roots, come in all different shapes and sizes and very in thousands. Another candidate for the course, sir, Miss Joanna Lumley, Company Sergeant Major Flanagan. Nice to meet you. Nice to do. Welcome to Exercise Survival, Mick. Take Thank a you. seat. The four basic needs for survival are water, shelter, food and fire. The will to live is the overriding instinct and we shall begin that process right now. Platoon sergeants! He wants it! Number two! Number two! Number two! There are three elements to a fire. Any flap is going to zip off the rolls of electric. Water. Here we have a method. Shelter. Have a look to see where it's been. Two trees. If you just look up there. Move on now. Yeah. And again, you can see the other side, and you'll be able to construct something like this in a couple of months. <laughs> We've now received the basic instruction on how to build a fire, construct an improvised shelter and obtain water. So all that remains to be done now is for you to put it into practice. So Sergeant McCulloch, I want you to take them away, get the patrol organised, get a shelter built, get a fire going, and get yourselves a brew made. And I'll be down in an hour and a half, and expect a brew going where I'll have a little bit of a sample. Understand? Right, sir. Right, take them away then. Double, double away. Loss of blood on the leg, all that sort of thing. Oh, it's started. Yes, son. Candle on straight away. All right, how's it going? Howdy. You got the old cup of tea That's on the go there? Perfect. What have you thought? I guess for the moment then. You do a little bit more sugar out there. I hardly had time to digest this mass of information before we set off for our island. It lies about 30 miles off the northwest coast of Madagascar. The last leg of my journey was by helicopter. The crew steamed out on a luxury boat, which was to be their base for the next nine days. The French pilot told me that the island is uninhabited except for the occasional passing fishermen, and is called Sarabangina, which means beautiful sands.
headed up the beach and waited for the crew and all their gear to catch me up. Now, this is what I've been allowed to bring with me onto my desert island. First of all, my sacking, on which I've laid everything I'm allowed to take. Ground sheet, mosquito net, insect spray, sun spray. First day's rations, water and rice and stuff in there. Torch, Irish guards, stuff, special survival kit, raspy thing to make fires with. SAS survival guide, some good strong cordage I filched from Purbright. My two tucker tins. My little drinking mug, my trusty knives, two of them, small one, big one, and a belt to hang them on, a pair of socks, a box of matches, good green string, stuff I shall be drawing on, writing my diary on. Oh, over here, shoes, rucksack, which I'll carry around with me every day, short sleeve shirt, trousers, things I insisted on bringing with me, my three clods. I never travel anywhere without a cloth. They're useful for absolutely everything. And this uh, walkie-talkie, which they insisted I had, so I can call them when they go back to the boat every night. And here is my own personal camera. It's equipment, it's tripod. There's only one other thing that I brought with me. It was my crew. That's them. And here is Dixie, who's filming all of us. With the introductions over, I set off to explore the island. This is itchy. Oh, oh no, I think I'm going to cover up actually. I think I should have done this before I came. It's a bit dim. Pink shirt and trousers on. Oh, lordy, lordy. That's nice. Put that in my tucker bag. And what else? Yes, limes. And I want yellow ones because they're the right ones. Oh, they've usually fallen off. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Look, a little arch. That's, um, that's marble arch. Look at this. And those I know are the four brothers, because the helicopter pilot told me that. They catch a frere. This is great. This is the north side of the island, so this is the north beach. Oh, how lovely. Okay, 
Oh, water! God, look at that! Oh, basin! Isn't that lovely? Look at the tap! It's pouring down. Look at this cave! Seems to be completely dry. It's absolutely dry as a bone. The tide doesn't get up here. God, it's fantastic. Look at that fantastic ceiling with all these sort of studded stones in it. This is as big as the Albert Hall. And from here, actually, I can see Marble Arch. That's just about right. It took me about two hours to slog right round the island. And in the end, it seemed best to build my camp on the beach where I'd left my gear. Boiling already. Now, where to camp, blah, 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 check your head for dead wood and trees. Turn to an edge of a wood, noise of something, types of shelter. Well, I think I'm going to build an A-frame, which is a kind of two tripods which support the bed bits between them, and then underneath you can build a shelf. And I'm going to face out this way, so I've got east and west, and I'll be sleeping north and south, which is very good for the spirits. So I need long bits of wood. Two. This is so hot and sweaty. The crew were desperate for me to finish the A-frame before the sun went down. After that, they returned to the boat, and the island was my own. I mean, look at that paradise, or what? It's just been the most incredible day. I mean, flying over the island and seeing, seeing it from the sky, and it just looked so beautiful and so sort of tiny and white sands and so perfect. And then we came to land, and it was unbelievably sort of alive with insects and a sense of flapping and suddenly the helicopter had gone and I was completely walking along the beach then luckily all the crew arrived so that was okay so off we started and we had such an exhausting I mean it's thrilling day having a look at the island which having looked at it from the top was oh, it's like a dream of it's like an sort of island you draw at school you know my favorite island my treasure island got absolutely whacked making the A-frame Ah, I mean, I think it just sounds so easy. A couple of tripods and you put a thing across like a hammock and it goes, yeah, I'll just make one now, you know, to have it ready in half an hour. It took me five hours, I think, to make that thing. So let's see what tonight brings. And let's see what's tomorrow's, Mike. Sara Bangina. What are you, Joanna? Fine. How are you? Fine, how are you? Well, it was 
It was not quite as I expected because it was such a fantastic day yesterday that I didn't really expect rain. And at about, I suppose it was about one o'clock, I don't know, I'm guessing at the time, um, it rained. And so underneath this, I just lay and got wet. I mean, it wasn't a hazard, really, but it was... It made me think that probably I've got to rig up this... <clears throat> make some sort of a cover for myself. Um, I've been tying all these little bits and pieces on here to make to make a little shelf at each end because um, it's actually quite a long frame and that means that when I'm in bed I don't have to keep getting out and, tra and trailing around as I find my cost going out to the loo in the middle of the night. Sandflies don't care about which hour it is and uh, I just got bitten to pieces so even though I'd got my lovely mosquito net I got back in nursing a mass of bites which was a bit of a hazard. So all in all it was a kind of interesting night but I have to tell you that compared with yesterday, this sky doesn't look too good. So I'm just going to have a little bit of a think about what to do. But this isn't bad, huh? This was sensational. This was the place to be last night. Absolutely gorgeous. And to be able to look out at the sea and just lie in here firm. It's as firm as a rock. I mean, thank goodness it took me. I know it took so long. And I got so whacked I didn't eat anything last night, actually. I was just too tired to eat. I got in here to test it out. <laughs> I didn't get out again. And then the rain came, so I couldn't make a fire this morning. But I will make a fire later on and get some tea brewing up. The rain clouds rolled in, so we retreated to the end of the beach to shelter. this little farm. What they say is Indian make small fire, keep warm. White man make big fire, keep warm, collecting logs. I'm an Indian. Not yet a very successful one, but... brightening up. I just don't trust this weather. There's a huge black cloud over there. So I've packed up my ground sheet and my bedroll. I've got everything I need in there. I've got some extra fruit. And I'm going off to spend the night in the Albert Hall, taking a shortcut through Mosquito Alley. Ah! I'll just rest here. Sit the storm out. I don't know if you can see them, but that's the crew leaving in dribs and drabs. Everyone's a bit down. We weren't expecting rain. Here I am in the Albert Hall at night time.
storm absolutely raging outside. You can't see it anymore. It's gone pitch black. But it's lovely and dry in here. I've got a good fire going. With some purified water, which is rainwater collected, put a water purifying tablet in. That's gone in there with some rice and the vegetable stock cube. So that's going to be ready in about three or four minutes. And this cave, luckily, although it's uncomfortable, I mean, it's very rough and a bit sort of shaly, at least you don't slip anywhere. So although it's dry, outside, but it's still scaly and shaly, at least your feet don't slip, although it's pitch dark. I've taken my shoes off, the dreaded fish feet, which absolutely stink. I've taken the insoles out so they have a chance to dry off a little bit in this. And uh, here we are. That sounds very good. It's only in the sea. It's lovely dripping with the rain. It's very soporific. So when I've eaten my supper, I shall then um, put my mosquito in it. Not mosquitoes in here. That's another of the great things. Just not. A few little tiny moths came, but no mosquitoes. So I can use this as a as a mattress. Maybe pull one little ladylike piece of lace over me to sleep. And it's great, and I'd rather be here than on that boat bucking around outside up there with all the poor old crew having a bad time. <laughs> I'm a bit of a bad sailor. Okay, that's all from Camp Albert Hall. Good night. Today looks bleak, rough, choppy, but still we'll do a bit of filming and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm going to go beach combing in any case. Well, as you can see, it's getting worse. <laughs> I mean, look at it. And the crew's just phoned and they're not coming ashore today. So I apologize now in advance for the amateur photography, as today I will be the only cameraman. Good grief. Can you see that? Gorgeous piece of coral. Hmm. That's coming back to the cave with me. These are just some of the things that I just found along that beach. First of all, this beautiful piece of coral. These extraordinary clamshells with such a huge bit. Imagine the size of the clam muscle that was hanging on, keeping those two bits together. Those might make nice plates or something useful. This exquisite top of a, I don't know, some sort of lobster or something, but it's got great sharp, beautiful horns, the most incredible coloring. And then, very tragically, but it's beautiful, this huge piece of, of turtle shell. Um, tortoise shell, turtle shell. They eat them around here, so I guess some fishermen had just sort of chopped it away or didn't want that bit and chucked it over, and, and I found it there. It's really beautiful. It's very sad, too. Anyway, people have to eat. And maybe they're eating, it's better than just wearing it. But still, I hate the thought of them being killed. These are just little spriggy flowers just to make it look attractive. These are the kissing rocks of Marble Arch. Originally, when I first saw them from the other side of the island, from the other end of the beach, I thought, I looked at it and I could only just see the archway, so I called it Marble Arch. Because one of the important things about an island where you don't really have any signposts or streets is that for yourself, you have to try to make everything have a name so that when you remember it, you go, oh, it was there, it was there, it was there. And you remember it. So this is Marble Arch. But as I came closer, I could see that in actual fact, it was the most perfect carving, a statue of little bear pigs kissing snoot to snoot like that. That's the baby on the right-hand side. I've just had a seriously wise idea because it actually hurts a lot to walk around the cave because it's really spiky and scaly and like flint. And because you don't want to wear your shoes all the time, the fish shoes, A, because they smell so bad, and B, because your feet just never get a chance to dry out, but you can't walk around, what do you do? You take out the insoles from fish feet, you dry them out like that, you take your bra, and I'm going to somehow cut, cut this and make it into little sort of shoes like that. And for that, I use my 
sewing equipment from the tin, and I'll show you them later. Well, it's been a strange old day today. Um, the storm had gone down a bit in that it wasn't lashing with rain, but it was, the sea was fantastic and so the crew couldn't land, they just couldn't get onto the island. I've still got this torch on. This is a very good one, because this means that, you know, it's directional, like a miner's lamp. The other thing was, I kept thinking, my, my head, I mean, I know I haven't washed my hair or cleaned my teeth or washed or anything like that, but what are these great scabs? And in actual fact, it's all, this is a terribly loose kind of stuff on the ceiling, and it's, sometimes when I bang my head, it's a <laughs> cave gets stuck in my hair. I can't tell you it's like not cleaning your teeth, not cleaning your teeth, if you're somebody like me who cleans them at least twice or three times a day. I've been doing sort of this trick which I heard Africans do, you know, you try to get a special twig and you it, it, it. All the wood I've been chewing, it's like chewing mahogany. It doesn't help at all. It isn't cold, it isn't cold, it's just, everything is slightly damp. And tonight I'm going to take a bit more care with my bed because, I mean, last night was exciting and strange and timeless. It's very difficult to keep any track of time. I haven't any idea what time it is now. I, I ate supper about an hour ago, and it was, I think, about an hour ago. And that was about an hour after sunset. So it must be about 8.30. This is a success story. Do remember the bra I showed you and the shoes? Well, they've just become, I think, a triumph. Um, they're adjustable down the edges like that. That was the bra strap, so you can make it make them a little bit tighter around the ankle. Um, that's, that was the cup, but it just looks like a most beautiful little espadrille. I sewed it down the side like that. There's some very good army thread. And this has made my life in the cave a completely different thing, because before it was... I couldn't put on the wet fish feet because they were just so depressing tramping around in here with these sopping wet fish feet. Also some huge blisters beginning to appear just from tramping about in fish feet all day. So these little babes are just peachy. So on that happy note, I shall bid you good night. bad weather comes from behind those islands there, the north end of my little island. Sometimes you just can't see them. They're just in, in 10 minutes, they just disappear completely under a sheet of black rain. Very slim pickings for supper last night. That vegetable stock cube and rice is getting a bit tedious. And uh, so I thought today that I might just go off and hunt for some food, see if I could, I don't know, pick something or dig something up, find something, vary the diet a bit. Foraging for food is an essential part of survival, and in any case, my pound of rice didn't look as though it would last for nine days. Sweet potatoes. their vines along until actually you're here. I'm in luck. A bit of a tree root there. Let's see what this one's like to dig into. Maybe the fishermen have dug this before. <coughs> Again, I don't really know what I'm looking for. I've seen them in, in Sainsbury's. What a hike. It's 
actually just a great long tuber like a carrot or something. Okay, on and on, but holding on. I stink. I think I've got to think of potato collecting. I should just think of digging a much bigger and deeper hole. Also, I didn't know whether like potatoes in England, whether you, you get one stem and in England you get a massive little potato. Oh, I've just snapped it. I actually am really thrilled, that's lovely. Nothing toxic about these, I can just clean them up and cook them. Actually that looks like wood, I'm not going to eat that. standing on here. John, this is a turtle. This is a turtle. This is a turtle coming out of the sea and it would go really s smoothly along here and these are his little um, going like that. Going up here. There's another one, there's another one there. There's a great big hollow here. Things are looking up. line up here with some homemade clothes pegs just because everything needs to get dry and flush down there and also you can screen yourself off if you need to not that you really need to this is the kitchen here kitchen area these lovely bits of driftwood which came out of a ship or something too far too good to burn so that's a lovely upright nice thing to hang my mug on um, chopping boards these are just old bits of driftwood again nice to chop this is my little larder carrot which I've had a bit of last night my lovely little limes my little apple berries. Delicious. But let me show you the tragedy of the bananas. In the bananas is no banana yet. So these, if I left them till they were grandfathers, would never have anything in them. So they look pretty, but that's all. Add a touch of green. Now this is the sort of most crucial area. Just have to do a little bit of work here on this part so it doesn't go out. You have to just tend to a fire all the time. It's like a little, 
It's like a child who's sick and won't eat properly. You have to just tempt it, you see. Would you like a little bit of wood? Would you like that little bit of wood? It's better stuff brewing up in there. This tripod I erect only for when I'm cooking. And this I made, I completed actually today, which is my little ladle, because it was so difficult trying to get stuff out of that black tin to see if it's cooked or not. So I just got to scrape the coconut, scraped it inside and out with my knife, got it all away, smoothed this stick, made two holes like that, jammed it in, a bit of string on there. The bra shoes are a huge success for this very rocky terrain in here. This is my bed, and at night time what I do is I just pull this out like that, and either the mozzie nets like that, or I have my cloth, one of these cloths, which I just wrap around me and try to hunker down. It's actually incredibly uncomfortable, but usually I'm so exhausted, it doesn't matter. OK, now the last thing I have to do is to wash the vegetables. Then I can put them into boiled. Supper. I wonder if you can see it. That's the little boat coming to take them home. Little glimmery light. Crew gone. Last chap's being picked up from the beach. Sunset. Well, what a strange day. I got incredibly dejected. I don't know why. This morning, I mean, on most trips, there's always a time when you, you know, you, you just have a bad day and you go, why am I doing it? It just hit me so much like an axe. I just felt utterly down, you know, very, very weak. I find being bitten by mosquitoes and things all the time and sand flies exhausting. <laughs> I rather lost my humour, got into a bit of a sort of sad bait. I might finish this later because what I'm going to do is to go and eat my supper and tell you what the yam was like. Okay, here I am for the second part of the report, just to say that supper was absolutely delicious. Those little tiny bits of yam um, were delicious. Unfortunately, I had such a problem with the fire that I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it to boil, and oh, it took so long that by the time I'd sort of boiled it up, I thought, oh, that'll do. So they weren't quite cooked, but they really were very good. So I'm going to go out tomorrow and get a pile of those. Now look, I did a bit of smuggling. On the aeroplane, when I was flying out rather grandly, first class. Thank you. I said, when they came around, I said, do you have a drink, madam? And I said, yes, some whiskey, please. Thank you very much. And I scrolled it away. And then the next morning at breakfast, and I had some honey on my thing. I took the honey out, scraped all the honey out from my coffee or something, kept the little pot, washed it, and filled it up with whiskey. So this is my contraband whiskey. And as today has been just a, just a tad gloomy, I'll just have a... Sorry, we are talking a seriously great moment. The other thing I smuggled in was um, an envelope from Jennifer Saunders just before I left London. I found it pushed through the letterbox, and inside it was just a collection of, of little sort of envelopes and things, each one with something different written on for the, for the island. Amnesia, uh, needing a reason to stay and enjoy the primitive culture. Vodka et patches, prescription. Uninspired, preparing food, thinking of doing Hello magazine, lonely, delirium. So I think today could be thinking of preparing food. So let's just see what she's popped in here. Something. I hope I can read it without my bins on. At home, whether you're having light refreshments or something more substantial, you will want the meal arranged so that it can be eaten within the minimum of fuss and disturbance, and you may find it convenient to have supper round the fire. It's a good idea to prepare individual dishes and serve them on separate trays with just the essential cutlery. To avoid continually passing back and forth, try to give each guest his own salt, pepper, etc. The trays can be prepared beforehand, ready to bring in between rubbers of bridge or television programs. Small tables and trolleys are invaluable when serving this type of meal. Make full use of any electrical equipment you may have, such as a hot plate, a coffee, a coffee percolator, toaster, vacuum judge to cut down journeys to the kitchen. 
Thanks, Jen. Hiya. Come and see. The turtle's been back again. Now look, I think these marks are terribly fresh. I think that these are she's come back today. This is this has been done in the early morning. Do you think um do you think it's worth you coming and spending the night? Because if you could camp out here, it would be just fantastic if we could just have a look at her. Maybe in the early morning we'd take watches to see when she comes and to catch her coming up and going down. Please. Thank you. lovely time to draw things because after the storm all the flowers have come out these lovely little I think they're orchids I know there's a name for them but I've forgotten it these little purple ones these which I'm sitting on around here and a cricket came and sat just long enough for me to draw him everything just seems to be blooming the birds have come back those lovely crows it's lovely nice and bright nice and dry I can sit outside and draw into dreaded Mosquito Alley again. Once in shorts is enough. This time I wear long everything. You see, the thing is, I don't think the weather's going to change and I don't think that the storms are over. And I don't think I can sleep on that terrible hard rock again without some sort of a mattress. What I'm going to do is to just try to... Remember what the mix told me. Don't into your leg, I'm going to try to make a mattress. something different for you tonight. I put on my green shirt back to front to give you just a slight change of scene. But there's another reason for wearing all these long sleeves. For some reason, the sand flies have come out tonight. When I got this morning, I made a really good fire. A really good fire. And I was going, yeah, cool for cats. Put the water on, just enough to boil up a mug. The tea, got the tea in. The stone to do. And then I made put one of my wooden ledges there where I do the flowers, blowing it up because I wanted to make some lime juice, sort of boiled up lime essence thing. 
and I lent on it the whole tee, all the tee went down the leg onto the 36A shoe. And it was funny, I wasn't really very depressed. I just thought, well, that's the tee gone. Once all the crews left the island, again, middle of the day, my island's mine. So I do what I usually do, which is take off all my clothes, keeping on the fish feet, bathing suit in one hand, fish feet in the other, nice stick. Do, 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 do. And I turn the corner, I'm stark naked. My stick and my bathing suit. And the boat, which all the crew was on, because it's been very rough, it had to come around more there. And, uh, I had a rock put on the thing, silly. Still sounds as though it's raining, it's not raining. I'm longing to get out of this cave now. Because you can't see the sky and there's no breeze. I mean, but there's only two alternatives here. Either you're in the cave and dark and hot, because it's very hot up there, or you're on the beach and bitten. <laughs> I can't think what's the, what's the best. I can't think what's the best. Um, Oh, I've forgotten everything else now. I'm getting a bit vague. Perfectly happy. Feeling really good. Feeling very good. C'est ça, c'est tout. up here this morning to look at the dawn. First of all, I thought it'd be good for them to get up early once in a while. And secondly, this is very near to where the big turtle came up to lay her eggs. I mean, it's just a chance that she might come up again, because we don't know when she comes up. I don't know what the time is now, but it must be about 4.30 or something like that. And the dawn's already coming up. We had a bit of a tragedy coming down here, because right at the far end of the beach, there were some tiny, tiny baby turtles who didn't make it to the sea, and they were just lying there dead. So we hope that the 40 that got away, well, maybe just some didn't. Maybe that's the way that nature goes. Very sad. But this is sensational. Once the sun starts coming, oof, it's going to be another blazing day because it's clear as clear. Last night we had a good storm. It was terribly hot yesterday. Good fire, huh? Today the crew insisted I tried to get a coconut down. I'd been putting it off as I was finding everything very tiring by now. I guess all these are dead and gone from the fishermen. So I'd better climb up and give one. Or get a stick, that's a good idea. Get a long stick or something like that. Ooh! Run like a sand light. In case that... Oh, missed. Gee, that burst! Look, you could see the stuff coming out. It's cracked, so I won't be able to open it that way, but you can see, look. <gasps> oh. Well, paradise. Isn't that great? Hoping that this gorgeous weather will hold, I've decided to risk moving back into the open air and my beloved A-frame. Now 
Now, I've got some supper cooking. I wish I could feel a little bit more excited about this supper, but it is yet again a sort of vegetable risotto sort of stew. I've got some more nice little sweet potatoes. I've got some water boiling here. I'm going to have some rice, vegetable stock cube, and squeeze some limes on. Here are some yams, cut quite small, so that they cook at the same time roughly as the rice. Yep. I'm calling them yams. I suspect they're sweet potatoes. That much rice, that'll do. Another of these attractive chaps. There we are. I won't add the um, I won't add the lime yet because it just gives you something thrilling to do later on. I'm actually bored stiff with this. However, it's supper every night. Give it a whiz around with this little ladle. Rather too cumbersome. But at least I can sort of do a bit of that with it, do you see? It's already looking, as you will agree, pretty attractive. Oh, hum. Everything cooked in this tin goes black, everything. So you eat as much rust and uh, burnt. You see, everything just goes that colour. So it's a, it's a bit of a pity. Um, luckily, in the cave, I couldn't see what I was eating. So I just felt slightly queasy. Now, here's the, here's the pièce de résistance, the little squeeze of lime. I wasn't given a spoon. So I've decided to use the pink shell today. If I lived on this island and I had to eat this every night, I'd eat fruit. I'd never eat yams again, and I'd never eat rice. And as for vegetable stock cubes, it's not so bad, actually, it isn't so bad. It's just, it's just not terrifically appetizing to look at. I think that's the bit that's depressing, is the black, the sort of squid-like gravy, which, as you know, it's sort of rust and old tins, kind of. Just, just make you just a little anxious. The other good thing, apart from the camera crew, if you eat in your own, you don't care what you look like. You don't care where you chop it. getting awfully sweet actually because they feel sorry for me with my with my vegetable stock cube and so yesterday I found a mango in my in my collection somebody had sneaked me a mango from their cruise yacht where they go back and tuck it in the evenings and so today I put in a cave over there which is where I'm storing some things my wet weather little cave there and uh, today when I went to get it a bird had gone so I thought um, time to eat the mango so I just sat on the rock there doing some drawings at mango the great thing is it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how you, you sit with your knees any old way it doesn't matter you can just eat mango like that and just let it all fall down and just walk into the sea anyway I'm rambling a bit because I'm extremely happy I hope you can see me this is Tsara Bangina those lovely birds, fruit bat. I must stop talking. I'm just extremely happy.
rocky bits like that. Lumpy hill there. And over there. So that is west. Now these are pyres. I can't believe that's right, but I might as well just have a little cut at it and see if it is. It feels as hard as nails. No, I'm afraid it's... It should be gold flesh with little black seeds. So I have to leave that for the insects. Thing seems to be higher up. I have to look for another. There's a slightly yellowy one. Oh! Could be a slightly mouldy one too. Let's see what that's like inside. I'm not going to open it up yet, or shall I? Never cut towards your hand. There we are, black seeds. Perfect, perfect orange flesh. best food in the world. The best food in the world. Okay, gang, you want some? For all that incredible rain, it's now about 95 degrees in the shade. This is the middle of the afternoon. It's been even hotter early on. So I thought I'd make myself a parasol. Um, the difficult thing is trying to find something, some way of making all those struts and spokes. And I had this genius idea of using this bit, which, if you remember, my mosquito net was round and is supposed to suspend from this. So I thought I'd use this as the sort of the middle frame bit. This is fishing line I'm using, and I'm sure it won't astonish you to hear that I haven't done any fishing, because I don't fish. I don't eat fish either. Also, once you've been out in the water with the fish, you get rather attached to them. They come up and sit beside me, swim beside me, little white fish with beautiful tails. If we could all live off peanuts and avocados, I think the world would be a better place. And the other thing I'm missing is toast and marmalade. Anyway, I just thought I'd tell you that. nice. Okay, a little bit of changing of light here. There we are. Get into the picture, which I hope is about here. And uh, we are, as they say, call for cats. Um, well, here I am today, having had another of the fantastic suppers. I've got to say, it is a bit boring, the diet here. But as a matter of fact, it's quite good, you see. There's nothing wrong with rice and sweet potatoes and 
limes and the odd pawpaw. I mean, I'm getting all the vitamins and all the things I need. Um, well, I think a few chaps have got in here with me tonight. Off you go, boys. And in any case, the strange thing is I'm actually not very hungry anymore. Oh, sorry, we've gone on to disco lights here. Hang on a second. And the bliss of not giving a hang what you look like. I mean, just not having a mirror, knowing you look like death. You probably recognize these fabulous vetements I've selected for this evening. Well, this is what I have to sleep in, in the A-frame. Because having left the cave, um, there are just biters everywhere. And so I wear my interior clothes um, at night time. And although it's very hot and sweaty, it's actually better than being completely bitten. I also put on a pair of socks, if you can imagine. Ah, toasty, toasty. I thought it might be time for another letter from Jennifer Saunders. Delirium. Well, actually, she's not far wrong. Let's see what delirium is. Official legal contract. I, Joanna Lumley, being of sound mind and huge IQ, do hereby and solemnly swear that hitherto and therefore I will appear in all of your clever, funny shows. I will give no consideration to the size of the part or the hair required. I will agree to do any parts that Diana Rigg, Anna Blackman or Linda Thorson and Annika Rice are too busy for. I will have surgery if required. Signed by the artiste. Signed by the other party, Jennifer Saunders. Well, I've got a job to go back to because nobody else wants to employ me looking like this. Thanks, Jen. I'm not lonely. I wave the crew goodbye. It's always sad to see them go, because I like having the crew here. I like the crew. And also, they smuggled me the odd apple and things, which is just peachy, because there aren't, there aren't papayas every day. You know, lots of them are green, like the one I showed you. They're green. Jennifer Saunders, lonely. a balloon. Hang on. It's got something written or drawn on it. Oh, it's got some nice faces on it. This face is saying, yes, I agree with you. Uh, I'm going to talk to it. Ha, ha, ha. How charming, says this face. And this one says, I beg your pardon, so I can, I can just sit here and get a drink. Uh, uh, waiter, waiter, a crocodile sandwich, please, and make it snappy. <laughs> How charming. <laughs> yes. I mean, what I do feel is, is uh, that camping is actually a very, very, very good thing. Oh, yes, I agree with you. Yep, yep. Yep. Lonely. Not me. something tragic. All my shells or something gorgeous like that went down. This shell on the beach earlier had been bashed about by the waves, making a natural little funnel. It's rather useful with these narrow necked bottles. Sometimes I stand a tin under this, it's pulling no time at all. Now, although this water is kind of not too bad, it's better to be, it's better to be safe. One nice little water tablet. 
when it's all prepared. And then put it in. And then in about 15 minutes, in about 15 minutes time, it'll be ready to drink. It'll be extremely refreshing. It tastes, in fact, like a municipal swimming pool. But you'll always add a squeeze of lime. Don't scatter litter. my last night here. It's quite extraordinary. It seems to have flown by, but it's now my last night. This whole idea was obviously thought up by Robinson, you know, the Robinson Crusoe idea and Girl Friday being Man Friday and Desert Islands and surviving and hang on, cool for cats. Um, and could you survive? And I suppose the answer is yes, I have survived, although I haven't really survived because obviously I've been filming and I've got a film crew and I've got radio contacts, so anything that went wrong I could have, I could have phoned for help. And I've been poaching apples and people have given me little treats like mangoes and things. But, I mean, I am alive and I have survived. I arrived with a fairly bare minimum and, no and nothing to keep coming washing up from the shipwreck. Um, but Robinson Crusoe was also shipwrecked for 22 years, and I knew I was only here for nine days, so it seemed really worth having a stab at all the things that survival seems to entail. That's why I seem to have been running around like a mad thing, um, having a crack at things, making stupid things like umbrellas, good things like cave shoes, um, necklace, ladles, matting, uh, trying to do, uh, you know, lovely, sh lovely shelter. Crusoe didn't have a mosquito net, I bet he wish he had. I've missed home, I've missed my people, but I haven't missed sort of what you would call civilization very much. I've missed washing the old wig. I mean, you know, forget it, this is coconut husk, this is sayonara, you know, bye bye baby. And sometimes you just long to be able to be clean and dry, and then, but then you stop that. I mean, my clothes are now beyond belief filthy and ghastly. So you don't mind, I sleep in them, I walk in them, they're full of salt, it doesn't matter. I've had them on for, what is it, ten, nine days, I can't think. That doesn't matter. If they asked me to stay on a few extra days here, or an extra two weeks or something, I wouldn't, it's been absolutely exhausting. It's been exhausting. But it's been completely wonderful. It's been so extraordinary. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Ideal. I built the most enormous fire here. I went around in the dark collecting anything I could find. I, I thought I won't use a torch, that sounds a bit, you know, I don't want to. So I burnt my what I call whale teeth, which are the big props I had here.
It'll be very, very sad to lose this. It's my seat and the dreaded tins. Ah! I've decided to leave a little memento to the island. I've written this letter. From Girl Friday to the next survivor on Sarah Bangina, I, Joanna Lumley, leave you the SAS survival guide and the remains of my Irish Guard survival tin. Here also is an excellent recipe you may like to cook up in these tins. Two chopped scrubbed sweet potatoes, one handful of rice, half a pint of purified water, tablets in the tin. Boil above together for 15 minutes and serve drenched in the juice of 14 limes. Serve on clamshell. Joanna.